Hello everyone, this is an overview of my version of Blender STF modeling tool. I called it STF Prototyper. You can get this tool for free in the link under the description down below. STF modeling is not something new. I remember in 3D Code has been using voxel sculpting for quite some time now. STF modeling I think is a similar concept. Recently, I saw some of the 3D news and the community that STF modeling is becoming more and more popular. So I started to do some research. The most popular one I can think of is WOMP. WOMP is very impressive. As you can see, it can blend two objects together seamlessly, even the colors it can blend together. But this one is depending on self-preference. For me, I don't really like the idea of online software. So I make another research. There's another one called Magica CSG. This one is in beta stage, but it's only available for Patreon users. And then there's next one. It's a plugin inside Godot engine. I don't know how to use this engine, and I'm too stupid to learn something new. So I skip this one, but this is a very cool and very impressive software as well. So I'm starting to wonder, is there any STF modeling in Blender? Turns out Blender is currently developing an STF node, geometry nodes, volume feature implementations. I'm not sure whether it will be coming on the next release of Blender or not. Currently they are on milestone 6, but the awesome Blender community has started to develop some plugin especially from Joao Desager. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. This artist has been developing STF plugin for quite some time now, and this tool is very awesome. I can't wait for this plugin to release. As I dig deeper, I found this awesome artist that share his modeling tools with geometry nodes online for everyone. His name is Emiliano Colantoni. I'm sorry again if I pronounce your name wrong. This artist has been sharing oui. his notes online yeah. for everyone for free. After watching his tutorials, I came up with these STF modeling tools and implement some of the new features that I can think of by connecting the dots and see what works and what's not. This is very heavy computing, so please use it at your own risk. As I mentioned before, SDF geometry nodes is still under development. So you need to download the alpha version of 3.6. You can go to the Blender website under the download, go to the builds and click on all archive builds. You can scroll down and find 3.6. Remember, you need to use the alpha instead of beta. So I use this final version of alpha. You can download this one. Once you download it, the next thing you need to do is go to the preference, go to interface, you need to turn on this developer extras. Once you turn it on, you can see this experimental. And then you need to turn on the new volume nodes. And that's it. Now you're ready to use this tool. So how to use this tool? Originally, in Emiliano's tutorial, he created all of these nodes that I think is adding and the boolean and then I implemented inset and slice I don't know how to explain all of this I will leave this to those experts who knows how geometry works I created this by just connecting the dots and I'm not sure whether this one is a correct way to create this or not if you see in your scene collections there are a lot of collections inside that you can see. It all renamed accordingly. It cut, slice, and inset. So the way that you use this, always create your primitive inside the edit template. 
This is your temporary collections for you to store your temporary primitive, if that makes sense to you, before you put inside the SDF prototyper. So let's get started. Let me drag this down and remove the original cube. I will leave this object that contains the geometry nodes here. Let's click on this one and create a new primitive object. This one will serve as your base. You can start by moving this into an add collection. This will turn your object into a volume. You see a wireframe here, it is very dense. Let me turn off this one. And the next one, just create another cube. And I will put it, this one, put it at the corner here. And I will move this inside the cut. Take note that we have, I have created at A, at B, cut A, cut B, slice A, slice B, inset A, and inset B. All of these actually serve a very different purpose. Add A, you can add the first object inside here. I will explain one by one accordingly. So once I put this box here, I want to cut this base. I move this inside, cut A. As you can see, this object has been boolean. Now let's create another object, UV, UV sphere. Let's scale it down a little bit. Okay. For this one, if I place this inside an add a, it will disappear. Why? Because the boolean object is still here. So let me undo this. If I want this object still appears and blend together with the base object. I need to put this inside at B. So these two objects will merge together and the boolean will not affect it. So if we want to cut this object, this sphere, let me create another base. Somewhere around here. Should be good enough. Since this sphere is inside at B, so I need to put this inside cut B. So as you can see, it's been cutting this second object. Now this works perfectly as been created inside the tutorials by Emiliano. Then I implemented a few more features, which is slice and inset. So now let's go to slice. Let's create an object, scale it a little bit. Put it here, and now I want to slice this. So let's place this inside the slice. Remember, if you want to edit this, for example, if you're not satisfied with this one, you want to bring it down a little bit more, you can just undo and edit the position and move it back to slice. So this has been sliced into two objects. And then I want to add another slice. You can combine these two slices together by placing this inside the same slice folder, which is slice one. So these two are combined together. Or if you don't want to combine them, you can move inside the slice B, which 
you will slice them separately. And the next one, the final one, is inset. Now this inset is very buggy. I not sure how this works because I cannot really find a geometry node for solidify that can solidify evenly. In geometry nodes, they only have scale and extrude. So I created a switch where you can switch in between. Let me show you some example. Over here. Why? Should be good enough. Set. So, before you use the inset, make sure you save your file because this might crash your project. Okay, so let's move this in to the inset collection. All right, it works. Okay, so like I mentioned, there are two options for you. You can use inset scale or inset extrude. By default, it's using scale. If for whatever reason it doesn't work for you, you can switch it to inset extrude. Like I mentioned, it's a bit buggy, so you have your options to choose whether do you want to use the scale or extrude. So as you can see here, if I use the extrude, it doesn't look good. So I'll switch it back to scale. And you still have settings here that you can use to refine your inset. Right? So let me create another cube. Set. Let's put it somewhere around here. And I shall inset this the second time. Let's hope it works. All right, fortunately it works. If you need to, you can control your bevel and subdivision. If you turn on your wireframe, if this is too rounded for you, you can control the bevel by reducing the, de the bevel. And then by reduce the increasing your subdivision. As you can see, you can still type in the value that you want if your computer can handle it. can go to very high density. But if you're using the high density of mesh, your base mesh will starting to show the polygon. So make sure before you are using this, you subdivide your base object. This is some small tools that I've been developing and I hope by doing this, I can learn more in geometry nodes. In the future, I will try to implement the texture ID to blend them together using the vertex. So this is it. I hope you like this tool and I hope you find this tool helpful in your project. This tool is not meant to change your workflow or is not something to replace your current workflow. It's just a prototype for you to quickly sketch up your project 
your object before you go for the final version. Thank you and bye-bye.